First Lady of the United States tonight tested positive for COVID-19. We will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately, he wrote. We will get through this together, he wrote in all caps with an exclamation mark. Um, Melania Trump also delivered her own tweet saying that they were both well and that they were self-isolating at the White House. Shortly afterwards, we had a letter from the president's physician. Again, he said the president was well, um, but what that didn't say was whether he was experiencing any symptoms. Uh, he said he would remain in the White House for now. That is such dramatic news, obviously, because we're in the final stages of a presidential campaign. Uh, the doctor, Sean P. Connolly, said, rest assured, I expect the president to continue carrying out his duties without disruption while recovering, and I will keep you updated on any future developments. But this is such dramatic news, and it's happened in the middle of the night on the East Coast time while much of America is asleep. Mm. And they'll be waking up to that news. And just speaking to an expert uh, not too long ago, he was talking about the possibility that there was a small chance, again, depending on who the source of this infection was, that, you know, many people, not least Joe Biden as well, might have been affected by all this. Well, you wonder about the interaction that they would have had this week. Obviously, it was the first time they came face to face. They were socially distanced on that presidential debate stage, but they were in the same um, environment. And uh, you wonder as well, who else could have been affected? Um, one of the president's closest advisors, as you said, Hope Hicks, she became infected. Um, she is in the president's inner circle. Um, you think of others that are in the president's inner circle right now. His White House chief of staff, for instance, Mark Meadows. What has he been doing um, throughout the last couple of uh, days? He's been up on Capitol Hill introducing the president's Supreme Court nominee uh, to senators there. You've had senior White House officials conducting negotiations with the Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi about getting an economic relief package passed. Um, so it underscores the difficulty of containing a virus like this. And obviously the President himself has come in for criticism uh, for some of the lax protocols. He's refused to wear a mask throughout most of the coronavirus outbreak. He's often been critical and mock those that do. And he's continued to carry on these crowded campaign rallies as, uh, as, the, as election day nears. So what's likely to happen next, very briefly if you can, Nick? Um, what do you see, how do you see this playing out? A lot will depend on the president's condition. A lot will depend on how he's affected. Um, a lot de will depend on how Americans r rally around him or sympathize him or frankly don't. I mean, this is a very polarizing president, more polarizing perhaps than we've ever seen in the past. And that's what complicates the sort of political reaction to this. We're in such the middle of this divisive campaign uh, and the president himself is so very divisive. The BBC's U.S. correspondent, Nick Brand, report, talking to me. They are live from the States. Well, let's get reaction now from Professor Kimberly Nalder. She's of California State University and also the director of the Project for an Informed Electorate. Now, you may have heard, uh, good morning to you. Uh, you may have uh, just heard our correspondent there, uh, Nick Bryant, talk about how divisive this news may be and how people may react to it. Uh, before we come to that, can I just ask you, you know, how whether you're shocked by the fact that Donald Trump and his wife have now contracted the coronavirus or whether it hasn't really come as much of a shock given uh, his behavior and his attitude to coronavirus up until now. Yeah, I think the shocking thing is actually that he hasn't gotten it until now. You know, there have been people in his orbit who have been diagnosed with it, including Secret Service who are guarding him directly and other members of the White House staff. So, you know, and the fact, of course, that he won't wear a mask and, and is, you know, sort of a denialist on COVID. I mean, it's actually surprising he hasn't gotten it until now. It's, what will this now mean, though? Because we're now coming close to, we're just a matter of weeks away from the elections in November. Campaigning was supposed to be right at its height now. Mm -hmm. And he's now going to have to, he's going into quarantine. And he will be away for possibly half of the time that he has left. What could that mean to the, to the campaign? I mean, it's just, it's, it's so much to process because this is, you know, nothing like this has ever happened before. And we don't know, 
if you know maybe the, he's infected um, Biden as well. They were on a campaign or they were on a debate stage together just two nights ago, shouting at each other. And so there's a possibility that both candidates could end up uh, getting this, so throwing everything up in the air. Um, he's not someone who uh, likes to follow rules or restrictions, and he, you know he's been going out in person in spite of, of the virus this entire time. Um, and he also is you know very afraid of being seen as weak like that's that's the worst thing a person could be in his mind and so it's it's hard to imagine him not trying to campaign if he feels well uh if if it doesn't go well for him though he won't have a choice so we'll have to see we're seeing different reactions on our, you know, on our social media site to this. Um, you know, some of them saying that, well, look, at the end of the day, this is terrible. Some saying, well, you know, he brought it on himself. Others saying, well, this is the president of the United States. I'm trying to look for the tweet that actually said that. This is the president of the United States. He has the whole machinery behind him. And now the health sector will kick in and this man will not be allowed to suffer at all from the coronavirus. What do you make of that kind of comment? Well, how did that go for Boris Johnson, right? Like, you suffer if you have the coronavirus. Um, you know, it's kind of ironic that Johnson and Bolsonaro in Brazil and now Trump have all three gotten it. You know, they've been leading coronavirus denialists in their countries, and, and, and now they're struck with it themselves. It's... Uh, you know, it's not something that you can avoid just by sheer will or even with the best medical care, you know, in the world. Here is a question, though, that uh, some people will be asking is, could this perhaps halt? The, uh, as you say, we've never been here before, but could mm -hmm. this actually lead to a postponement of the elections if things get so bad or if things deteriorate, if Joe Biden gets it too, you know, everything is speculation, mm -hmm. but could that be a possibility? We don't have a mechanism for that. Um, you know, what, what could happen is, you know, one or both of them withdraw or they're incapacitated, then the party committees could still appoint a successor. The difficulty would be that some people have already voted, and so what happens to those votes that are or for a candidate that's no longer on the ballot. Um, the, the stickier question, of course, is, you know, what they're just ill and then they recover and they don't want to be taken out, off of the ballot. I mean, we, this is uncharted territory. Um, when we don't know how things proceed, it goes to the courts, um, but it could just be a nightmare. Professor Kimberly Nalder, thank you very much for, for joining us, and she's the director of the project for an informed electorate. She's based at California State University. And as you'd imagine, lots of reaction on the BBC World Service Facebook page. Tiffany says it's poetic justice. Maybe Joe Biden will be gracious and send him a mask. Washington says it's so, so sad. There's nothing more painful than to fall victim of what he's been mocking and downplaying all along. He wishes them all the best and hopes the experience will make them realize how serious the pandemic is. Mm, somebody called Behim says now he might have to think about having a stronger lockdown all over America. Meanwhile, Alex says it is real. Corona or somebody is trying to avoid. He said, is it real rather? Uh, or is it real coronavirus or is somebody trying to avoid another debate fiasco? Uh, but uh, somebody called a Bro says it's not a death sentence. Trump and Melania will come out stronger. And if you want to add your voice, so you, please remember you can text us by using the number plus four four seven seven eight six twenty fifty eighty five.